Well, hello and happy day wherever you are. Now, remember that this is coffee and crochet with Sarah, but today it's tea time. <laughs> well, I posted a picture of um, one of my new coasters and I got a lot of feedback asking me, what is Oklahoma sweet tea? So I'm going to give you my special recipe today. <laughs> and I also want to tell you how much I missed you last week. Um, those of you who don't know, just first of all, our live video chat is on Facebook, Posh Pooch Designs. And um, if you watch it there, it's at 9.30 a.m., mountain time because I'm in Colorado and then after we do the live video I tweak it up a bit <laughs> and then I shoot it over to our YouTube channel now last week I was on sort of a vacation we decided to go down and check on my father-in-law who's uh, his it was actually Father's Day and also his birthday and he's 83 he's doing really good and it was good to see him <clears throat> and while we were down there we also visited my husband's sister she just lives a couple miles uh, away from them they live in Pahrump and Pahrump's about 45 minutes to an hour outside of Las Vegas and I'm telling you it was hot I got a little bit of sunburnt and they have a farm there called RNG Farms in Pahrump they have uh, many horses and several kinds of goats they have sheep. They have pigs. They had this one pig that had lost all the hair on his sides. He looked like he had a mohawk. It was adorable. They also have turkeys and chickens and ducks. And it was the funnest thing when we got there. We, we took out frozen bags of corn and she had chopped up some plums, watermelons and fruits, I think, to feed to the animals. And so we went out there with her and she was watering all the animals. And she we put out the uh, frozen corn kind of in a long line. Well, the ducks saw it first, and so they started quacking, and they started walking over to the pins of where the, the chickens and the turkeys and all the other, uh, they have these thing called guinea hens. They're the funniest thing to watch run. They're like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> just so cute. But she said they keep the snakes away, which is really good. But it was the cutest thing because once the ducks saw all the frozen corn, they went and told everybody, whack, 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 whack. And then all these, these ducks and chickens and geese, uh, not geese, they, don't, they have some baby geese, but, um, and the, the roosters and the turkeys, they all come running for that frozen corn. Well, it was 110 degrees, so that frozen corn probably was really, really good. And so we, when we were uh, watering all the animals, they had this one uh, type of goat that was just the cutest thing, but it didn't have ears. It just had like little curls for her little tiny ears. It was the cutest thing. And they had lots of babies and it was so much fun just to walk around. You know, um, in Pahrump, they have wild horses and they also have wild donkeys. And um, they do some rescue work. They'll, they'll, you know, rescue some of the horses and different things. And then, you know, till they can find homes for them and things. And they have these two rescue donkeys. And all the animals, um, they do, um, like, um, birthday parties and stuff and do petting zoos. Well, all the animals were just used to people. And we were having the best time. And I walked over to the, they have a great big pen where they have these two donkeys that they rescued and that they're trying to um, get used to people. Well, I walked over to the pen and this one donkey's like, you know, <laughs> he was so funny. And then I got a little closer and he just sort of jumped at me and did this like meh thing. Uh, no, it wasn't like that. It was more like, e <laughs> you know, I scared the daylights out of me. So I went running back over to where all the horses and stuff were. They're like, were you afraid of that donkey? <laughs> it was the funniest thing. <laughs> But anyway, we had a really nice time, and we were trying to uh, work the timing out driving back home so we could do the live video at, we were thinking maybe Hoover Dam or some other places, but it, it just didn't work out. And then when I would find a place I really liked, there wasn't cell service. And so when I finally got in where I could make a little video, a uh, little, not a video, but um, let you know that I, we just were not going to be able to do that live video. But it was so funny because we would get 
internet and then you know you're going in and out of the mountains and it's just we just didn't get good coverage and so i really missed you guys not getting to talk with you and see your your comments and things but anyway it was a successful trip we got back and we were like so tired you know how you are when you're on the road but at least the drive from colorado where we're at in parker colorado down to pahrump really is a very scenic drive if you ever go down there it is very pretty and it moves from mountain range to mountain range it, it, it is a really pretty drive and um, we were a little concerned you know because you have to wear the masks in the grocery stores and things and i was worried about uh, uh when we stop and get gas um we can't leave the dogs in the car and so one of us will go in and stay with the dogs in the air conditioning than the other one well i was concerned that some of these places would be closed and i wouldn't be able to go potty isn't that silly everything was open and we were able to get gas and do our business <laughs> so yes it was a very successful trip all right now a couple of things i wanted to talk to you about first um I got a lot of emails. It was kind of interesting because I was going through all my emails, trying to get caught up on all the messages and things. And I got several um, messages asking me if I know anything about the Dollar Tree crochet hooks. Well, I haven't been to a Dollar Tree in a couple weeks, and I have some shopping to do today. I've got to go pick up some milk, and I want to get some crafts at Hobby Lobby for my granddaughter and I to do for the 4th of July. And so I'm going to swing by the Dollar Trees like right across the street from where our Hobby Lobby is. And so what I think I'll do is I'll swing into my Dollar Tree and see if they have them. And then I'll let you know next week if they have them and what I think of them, okay? So I know I got several emails about Dollar Tree yarn, Dollar Tree, there were plastic hooks, and someone sent me a picture of ones with like rubber handles and metal hooks. So if you're out and about the next couple of days, wear your mask, and go to Dollar Tree <laughs> and stay six feet apart from people because I don't want anybody to get sick. <laughs> so anyway, I'll let you know what I find, if I find them, and what I think of them, okay? So I thought I'd mention that since I got quite a few emails about it. All right, the other thing I got a bunch of emails about was my Oklahoma sweet tea. Now I want to show you my cup. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. It says Rise and Skein, and it's got a, a rainbow... Let me see if I can tilt it. It's got a rainbow with a yarn ball. And look what color the yarn ball is. It's yellow. <laughs> my favorite color. So I thought I'd put my Oklahoma sweet tea in my new cup. I bought this at Hobby Lobby. I was just in there when we were out and about. And I said, I have got to have that cup. <laughs> I always buy coffee cups. So I bought a sweet tea cup. So today... We're doing coffee, tea, and crochet. <laughs> All right. So when I did the the uh, um, country cotton coaster, and I'll show it to you in a little bit, everybody was asking me about, what is that drink that's sitting there? What's in your picture? And I told them it was Oklahoma sweet tea. So let me tell you exactly how I make Oklahoma sweet tea. Um, a lot of you know, I was born in Iowa, but I was raised from about four or five until I graduated high school and then later got married. We, I lived in o Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then after my husband and I, uh, after he retired from the military, we raised our kids in Rapid City, South Dakota, Germany, Great Falls, Montana, uh, uh, out in Rantoul, which is outside of Chicago, and I, we, we, we traveled all over the place being in the military. So then after he retired, we moved back to Oklahoma, and then we finished raising our kids the last 16 years before we moved here, back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, near my family. Okay, so I, I pretty much, is, I mean, I'm just, I claim Oklahoma as my home state. Okay, so how do you make the best Oklahoma sweet tea? Well, the first thing you need to do is buy one of those great big jugs of pickles. <laughs> Eat all the pickles and save the jug. <laughs> okay, so you need a one-gallon container, all right? If you're using an old jug of pickles or whatever, make sure you clean it out real good and rinse it out real good. You don't want your tea tasting like pickles, okay? <laughs> all righty. I forgot to say good morning to everybody. I am so sorry. I just got to chatter, and I'm just so glad to see all of you. 
But anyway, you need a one gallon container. You can use a pitcher, whatever you've got, but a one gallon container, fill it up with cold water. All right. And then you need four family size uh, tea bags. And I like Lipton tea. I also like all the other kinds, but it's just your basic Lipton tea, inst not instant, tea bags, four family size. All right, so you filled your jug up with ice cold water and you put your four tea bags inside. You can pull the strings out and put the lid back on. And that's very important because you're gonna set it out in the hot sun for four hours. You don't want to leave the lid off or you're going to get some ants or fly. I had a bee get in my tea one time because I left it cracked just a little bit. All right. So put that lid back on, set it out in the hot sun where it's going to get four continuous hours of sun. That's very important because that's going to heat up that water. It's going to cause the tea bags to drip the tea down into the water. Now, if you don't want to do sun tea, it's okay. You can boil a gallon of water and put your tea bags in it that way, all right? I really love doing it in the sun. And the reason that I like doing it that way <clears throat> is because you're not uh, quickly pulling that acid out. It's like a, a gentle trickle, all right? So once your tea has been out there for four hours, bring it in it, and you may need a hot pad you know, to hold that jar because, you know, like Pahrump, it was 114 degrees. That tea's hot. <laughs> so keep that in mind. The sun is very hot. A good place to put your jar, if you're going to set it out in the sun, is on, a, is on a coffee table or maybe on the hood of your car or just someplace up. I, I don't recommend putting it on the ground just because it can get knocked over or whatever, okay? So... You've got your, your gallon of hot water with your four big tea bags in it on your counter. I always put a towel down just in case it's hot underneath. All right, you take the lid off. If, if you wait for it to cool enough, sometimes you can set it right in the refrigerator if you have room so that it can cool a little quicker. You, pull, you, you squeeze those tea bags and you pull them out. This next part is very important. You're going to pour in two cups of granulated sugar and then you're going to pour in an eighth of a teaspoon let me make sure i get this right i wrote down here yes an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda and i know that sounds weird but the reason you're putting it in there is because of course the sugar is going to sweeten it up but the baking soda will help that tea not get cloudy. You know, sometimes you make tea and it sits in your fridge two days, and on that third day, you go and get a glass of tea and it looks a little cloudy. It's fine, it tastes fine, but it's a little cloudy. That baking soda will help that tea stay clear. And it will also help those acids to kind of stay down, because sometimes the acid in the tea can bug your stomach. All right, so you're gonna mix in those two cups of sugar you're gonna mix in that 1 8 cup of baking soda and you're gonna stir it until it's all dissolved. Now, sometimes it doesn't get all dissolved. And so what I do is I put the lid back on and I just put it in the refrigerator, okay? And this is the same way if you boiled the water on your stove and made your tea in a big pot, okay? Now, if that's too much tea, you think, I am not making a gallon of tea, it's too much. You can cut it in half. You can make a half a gallon of tea of water. You can only use two family size tea bags. You can use one cup of sugar and a fourth of a teaspoon. No, let's see, eighth. Let's see, eighth be what it be one sixteenth of a teaspoon of um, the baking soda. Just make sure you stir it all up till it's dissolved. And even if it doesn't dissolve, put the lid on. Put it in the refrigerator. Just make sure before you pour it in cups that you've stirred it again. <clears throat> to make sure that sugar and baking soda is all mixed in. The key to good Oklahoma sweet tea is to brew your tea dark. Because what we do, and what I we did in our family when I was growing up, is you take your glass and you fill it up with ice. Because it's hot outside. So you're going to fill it up with ice. And then once you've stirred that tea up, you're going to pour that tea right in there. And that ice is going to melt. When you make your tea really strong like that, 
it doesn't get watered down with the ice so much that it tastes just like yucky water. You want to taste the tea. That's the whole point of Oklahoma sweet tea. Now, I have this all written out, and it'll be on the blog, okay? So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click that link underneath the video. If you're watching this on Facebook, I'll just post that blog like I always do after a couple hours once everything's finalized and my spelling is checked. <laughs> All right, so that's how I make Oklahoma sweet tea, and that's how I was taught to make Oklahoma sweet tea. That doesn't mean that everybody in Oklahoma makes it that way, though. <laughs> Another thing that you can do to make your tea really fun, you can slice oranges, you can slice lemons, peaches, blueberries, strawberries, any kind of fruit. You can slice it up after you've brought it back into the house and you're getting ready to put it back into the fridge. Um, you've put the sugar, you've put the baking soda, you can put that sliced fruit in there, especially if you're making this a day ahead. And then some of those juices from the fruit will get in and make that tea extra good if you want a fruit flavored tea. My favorite, of course, is peach. And I'm looking forward, you know, up here in Colorado, we had the Palisade peaches and we had a hard freeze and, we, and the, the peach growers lost a good percentage of their peaches and so i'm really sad about that but i'm still gonna buy some because there is no better peach than the palisade peaches there, there just isn't all right let's talk crochet now we did a lot of videos and so what i did um is i videoed some videos ahead of time and then i scheduled them on youtube they may not have posted on Facebook the day that they were scheduled because I was out of town, of course. And I tried to um, uh, post it so you'd have some videos. And so I want to go ahead and show you all the things that we did last week and this week. And so there's a lot here. One of the things I wanted to show you was this. This is our Lazy Daisy chain. We updated the pattern. And it's super cute and you can wear this as a necklace it makes a nice belt you it makes a really nice handle for a purse you can make it small and make it you know put your daisies closer together and make a headband and that's the thing about this pattern I'm gonna click down over here so you can see it just a little bit closer we'll click on our top cam here and here's our lazy daisy pattern and you make your daisies and then you can decide how many chains you make in between. Sometimes I make 10, sometimes I make 20, and sometimes I'll just make a few. If you want to make it into a headband, you can just do a few chains and make a really cute headband. It's basically a four petal flower with chains in between. And it's a super fun pattern. It's a really great beginner pattern for someone who wants to learn chaining and then add a little extra to it. <clears throat> we already had this pattern out there and I wanted to update it. And this is one that I did ahead of time and scheduled last week. Another one that we did were the Frisbee flyers. There's two sizes and these things really do fly. They're great for dogs. And let me tell you what I do. See this little pocket? I take one of their treats, I stick it down in that pocket, and then I toss it. And I see which one of them grabs it, gets the treat out. It's so funny because the one that gets the treat will stand there and eat it, and then the other one will bring me the Frisbee. <laughs> it's really funny. So these are two sizes, five and six inches. And the only difference is the six inch one has an extra row of increase. And of course, this is a free pattern on my blog, and it's also on YouTube. And they're just called Frisbee Flyer dog toys super easy and super fun and the kids like them too my granddaughter and I sometimes if it's raining or snowing outside we just throw these around the house <laughs> you know just for fun sometimes we put a basket in the corner and just see if we can get them in there you know you got to be imaginative when it's raining and snowing outside and they're just they're just super duper fun frisbee flyer dog toys I put on there and the kids love them too. <laughs> so that was another one that we did. We updated the pattern ahead of time and uh, uh, scheduled the blog or scheduled the video on YouTube and then it's on the blog as well. All right. Now, another thing that we did last week was this cowl. Let me move this out of the way. And this is our, our, our um, Jaqua lace cowl. 
and it's really pretty and really easy and I love I love this pattern because you don't have to add any trim on it because we did these stitches on the end you've got four on each end it gives you a little bit of a trim and you don't have to add any extra single crochet trim or anything and it's just a lacy pattern and it's really pretty and I did that that's Jan uh, Jana's Vanna's choice <laughs> I don't think Jana has a choice <laughs> Vanna's Choice yarn, and I believe the color was pistachio, but I think it would be really pretty in some of the ombre colors or even some of the striping yarns. I think it would be really, really pretty. Okay, now one of the other things that we did was the Country Cotton Coaster, and I really like these because they're just a little bit bigger. They're about five inches across. Your typical coaster is about three and a half to four inches, I think. Just depends on how you stitch. But these are about five inches across. Let me, let me put them over here also so you can see them on the other cam a little bit closer. These two are done with just a red, white, and blue striping yarn. And these are done with, um, it's called stripey. This is peaches and cream. I think this is sugar and cream. Or it might be vice, vice versa. But anyway, I loved how they turned out, and I love that these have such a country look to them, and that's perfect for your cup of tea. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I love these, and we use coasters a lot, and part of the reason that they're great for a cup of tea is, you know, um, yes, they'll protect the wood surface or the counter or whatever, but because they're made of 100% cotton, when your teacup sweats, although this one's got an extra layer, so it's going to catch that sweat, but when you're just um, having it, because I love to drink iced tea out of mason jars, but they sweat, and so you've got a coaster, you can put that mason jar on, it's going to catch all that sweat. You can toss it in the laundry along with your, your kitchen towels, and they'll be just fine. I put these through the laundry. And one thing I have found about cotton is the first time you use it, it's not very absorbent because it has like a sizing on it. And so it's always better. once When you make something out of cotton that's going to be used for something like this, you want it to be absorbent. Toss it in with your kitchen towels uh, and then through the dryer, and then they come out softer and more absorbent. And it's just something that I discovered just because I love working with cotton yarns. All right, so that's our country cotton coasters. All right, now, yesterday um, I posted this pattern. This is my Americana blanket. And I took the yarn with me and worked on it while we were on vacation. And I'm gonna show you the yarn. It's I love this yarn. It's called Brighton Road Medium 4 Acrylic. And look at those colors. I showed this to you before. My granddaughter and I were walking through Hobby Lobby a couple of weeks ago, and I told her, I said, I'm looking for something red, white, and blue, but not bright. I want muted colors that kind of remind you of country. And she walked right up to it and goes, like this? <laughs> she, she was fantastic. And so this yarn is absolutely perfect. And again, I'm going to take you over to our other camera. Let's see. There we go. And I want, because I want you to see these colors. This, I love this yarn. You purchase this at Hobby Lobby. You get five ounces on a skein. It's a medium four, but check out those colors. Isn't that pretty? I just love it, and, and it's perfect for this blanket. But you don't have to make it out of these colors. You can make it out of any colors that you want as long as it's a medium number four acrylic yarn. Isn't that pretty? I just love it. This yarn is just really, really soft, and it just lends really well for this type of a blanket. It's just a combination of granny style stitches that form a triangle. And then as the triangle gets smaller, the stitches in between get wider. And it's really pretty. Um, this is the one I discovered this morning was number three on Ravelry. Isn't that cool? And so I think a lot of people are looking for something like this. It's not the same old red, white, and blue, although I love red, white, and blue, of course. But I love how it looks. And that's why we called it Americana. Because I've, I keep saying when I, you know, when I was growing up and stuff that in my opinion, Americana was, you know, it's a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll, you know, like that song says. And that's how I kind of view Americana. It's a rustic uh, country thing, but it also, it rocks the yarn really well. <laughs> 
And of course, you can use any yarn you want to. You can stripe it. You can use any of the um, striping yarns or ombres, and it's still a really beautiful, and it's easy. It's just a six row repeat that you repeat as much as you want to, and you can make it wider and you can make it longer. So it's kind of up to you the size you want to make. And I just, I love it. It's so beautiful. I'm going to put it back on my chair because I think it looks gorgeous right there. There we go. Isn't that pretty? It looked pretty in Christmas colors too because the triangle kind of looks like Christmas tree. I just thought of that this very second. <laughs> If you all knew the amount of creativity that was going on inside this head of mine, it would probably scare you half to death. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without going, oh, I could crochet that. <laughs> Some of my greatest ideas are walking through the children's department and looking at what's popular, colors and shapes and things, and I go, oh, okay, and then I write down little notes. If I don't write it down, I forget it. So, anywho. Okay, that's what's happening this week at Posh Pooch Designs. <laughs> I told you we had lots of patterns to talk about and lots of videos, and it's two work weeks worth. Now, what's going to be happening uh, the rest of this week, we're going to do a couple more patriotic type patterns, and then next week it's going to start baby week. We've got um, three, maybe four patterns for some items for babies, and we're going to do that because... Um, She's asking, if you don't have family size, how much do you use of the regular bags? I really don't know. You'd have to look at the size of the family size opposed to the size of the regular. Because I only buy the family size, so I don't know, you know, what size. Okay, <clears throat> so then uh, next week we're going to do Baby Week. The rest of this week is patriotic, then the next week we're going to do Baby Week. And so we got some patterns. I've got a blank baby blanket and a couple of other things. I think a bib and uh, some scratch mitts and something else. I can't remember exactly. But there's four uh, patterns that we're having tested right now that will be the next week after that, just to kind of get you uh, to understand what we're doing in the next couple of weeks. And then hopefully the week after that, we're going to have Christmas in July. And I've got a couple of patterns that we're working on for that. <laughs> Because we do everything way in advance and so that things can be tested and uh, so they can read over my, make sure my spelling and my numbers are right, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's what's coming. And then next Tuesday is when we're going to announce what the June giveaway is. And I'm looking at it and it's really cool. And I think you're really going to like it. So tune in next week, next Tuesday, 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time on Facebook and then on YouTube so that you'll know what the giveaway is for next, uh, for June. We're going to tell you what it is next Tuesday, okay? All right, I think that's all I've got for you today. I just want to share this one last thing for you, and I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it. You're never fully dressed without your smile according to Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> and I know when we go into the stores, we have to wear a mask, right? When we go out in the public, we have to wear a mask because we want to keep us and others safe. So I always say, I'm smiling. You just can't see it when I talk to the cashiers and stuff. And I have to tell you, last, uh, it was like three weeks ago, I had this little smile on a stick. I should have brought it up here so you could see it. And I was at Safeway checking out and so she said, well, have a good day. So I brought my thing up. I said, see, I'm smiling. And she just busted out laughing. And she said, you just made my day. So remember that your smile can make somebody's day. <laughs> but we have to be creative, right? <laughs> All righty. Let me look through and see if there's any questions. Then I'm going to let you go. Oh, Carolina, she says, I made the mistake of ordering unsweetened tea while she was on vacation in Georgia. Yeah, that's a no-no. It's all about the sweet tea. <laughs> in the South, it's about the sweet tea. We raise our kids on it from infancy. I mean, it's the truth. It really is. All righty, so let me check. I'm going to go through here. It's so good to see so many of your names. 
You know, that's part of the thing is I, I love seeing new names. I really, really do. But I also really love seeing your, your names that I recognize as well. All right. Lots of great names. Okay, Marlene says, do you have to do the foundation chain to start that blanket? Anytime, let me answer this real quick. I know we're going over our time. But anytime a pattern says, you like this one, I think it's 102 foundation double crochets. Anytime they do that, you can substitute a chain and a row of double crochets. Make sure that you have the same amount of double crochets on that row that you need for the foundation. And so what you're going to do is it needs 102 double cro or foundation double crochets. So you're going to chain 104, and then you'll begin in the fourth chain from the hook, and then stitch a row of double crochets. The chain three counts as your first one, and then you have your next one, and that's going to give you 102 double crochets. The, the reason I like to start with a foundation double crochet is it gives you a nice even row, and it's really a lot easier to count your stitches. And it's a really good technique to learn because it does give a little extra stretch. When you chain and then double crochet, you don't get as much stretch on the edge of whatever that you're making. So the answer is yes. <laughs> All righty, let's see. Let me go through see if there's any more questions. Let's see. All right, looks like we got everything. Um, <clears throat> Heather says, what's my favorite brand of crochet hook? I like them all. I don't prefer the Susan Bates style. I like the boy style, B-O-Y-E style. I've been using a, a set I got from Hobby Lobby that I really like because I have small hands and I also have arthritis in my fingers and wrists. And so the smaller hooks do better for me, the smaller handles. So that's everything this week. Remember to smile, have a great week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now, everybody. Mm -hmm.